well, that's been a theme of the day and a half, hasn't it? That, yeah. um, whether we like it or not, you know, you're judged on results, mm -hmm. and you have to be able to measure results and prove them to uh, to get there. So, what, what's your take on that? And what what can we do? Is it? I mean, some people have said, you know, every agency has got their own measurement system, their own metrics, and you almost use them as uh, USPs. You know, yeah. it's a competitive thing. Um, is it time for the industry to basically say, no, we've got to work a bit to get together a bit more on this? Well, it's, it's a, uh, for better or for worse, it's a bigger question. As Fred said, uh, the competition has expanded so much. For 50 years, we had the luxury of sitting around and saying, we should come up with a, a measurement standard for our business. Now we are so immersed in the measurement standards of all marketing communications and a few other things that it's a totally different ballgame. You know, IBM spent over a billion dollars on a marketing analytics firm last year, acquired it, because analytics have become so serious, a company like that wants to buy into the category. Uh, you know, one of the questions I think facing our business is, do we prepare so that our discipline can fit in really well to what's now become the big business of marketing analytics? Or do we try and create some kind of Uber uh, marketing analytics product of our own? And I don't think we do the latter. This, that train has already left. There are now many systems and hundreds of companies built around marketing analytics. We have to make sure that our discipline fits in a very compelling way into that. I do think our discipline has to obviously measure traditional and earned media, and we should have our own sense of how to measure uh, social media. We really have to develop that, and, and uh, I think most of us have already developed some very legitimate form of that. Ours, the Digital Footprint Index, looks at height, width, and depth. So it looks at height as in volume. It looks at depth as in links, um, width as in links, and depth as in are they, are they actually making a recommendation about the brand or just having a conversation? It's a very, I think it's a very good quantitative and qualitative way of looking at uh, earned digital engagement and online conversations. But, you know, it's, it's, um, but how do you get that up to the chief executive who, who then recognize, yes, this is really pushing, moving the needle in our business? Oh, here's a statistic. 300,000 people protested on Facebook about the $5 per month uh, debit card charge for Bank of America. Now, how do you like that, Mr. Chief Executive? Scare the crap out of them. I mean, that's how it works. I'm sorry. I mean, you know, you, you, we, we cannot play the same game the ad guys do. You know, they're, they're, they're much better established. By the way, what chief executive wants to see ahead of an ad agency? None. Try that too. They'd rather see us because we're more interested. We're the stakeholder guys. We're, we're much more uh, attuned to the times than he or she cares about. Um, but you're so, only getting 6% of the budget, so the ad agencies are getting faster now, more than that. You know, though, I think that the metric battle is much more of a marketing discussion now. At the CEO level, um, there, there are very good ways of measuring your corporate reputation and as Sarah Palmarino from J and J said, your brand equity. Um, those are pretty accepted uh, metrics. You know, our, our client Fred Smith at FedEx actually has as part of his compensation uh, the annual measure of their reputation in relation to all their stakeholders, which is you know we wish everyone was in that, that group. So I don't think we need that the metric I, I would say to get to that that level. But within the scrum that's going on, the huge money that's going on within the marketing world. We have to play a very legitimate case. So, Rob, maybe you have a really good point, though. It's like a Venn diagram. If you say, you know, here's brand, here's corporate reputation, we're the one guys who can do both. Yeah. You know, maybe if we slide it over. And just the fun. Yeah, I, I think um, it, now that all marketing has gone, as, as we say, 360, um, you know, how many times does an ad agency come in and have an employee component to it? Have a public policy component, given that all marketing is issues marketing today? You're going to market a health product or a food product without taking into consideration the, uh, you know, the, the health issues around it, the regulatory environment. We've always taken a multi-stakeholder approach. I think we really need to press that advantage. And we're getting a lot of our, it's interesting, um, another Forrester survey asked people what agencies they go to for digital media, social media. Still advertising agencies rank number one on that list. But we get about half of our social media work from clients who started with their ad agency and were unsatisfied and moved it over to us to take care of it because we understood it much better than the ad agencies did. And frankly, that for an ad agency, a social media program, it's really not enough money for them. They're, they're looking for big television campaigns and if they're not used to doing things on 
the kinds of budgets that, that we operate on. So I think we do have an advantage. They have more money, but we have an advantage, I think, to chip away at that. And I, I, I'm tired of uh, seeing ad agencies come after our business. I'm much more interested in going after their business.